there, I'm Ken. This is Canadian Retro Things. Welcome to this episode. In this episode, I am going to be looking at a camera. Why a camera on this retro channel, do you ask? Well, it's simple. I have the idea for doing some things in the future on my channel that requires equipment I don't currently own. So I have to start expanding my equipment selection. And I had a couple of simple criteria for this. I needed something with a front facing screen and something that uh, had decent image stabilization so that I could properly frame myself and use it while I'm moving around. So I thought to myself, hey, that sounds like a GoPro. So I looked into getting a GoPro. They're way out of my price range. And they probably do a lot more than what I need. So. I started looking around some more and I found something that I hope is going to work. And that is the Acaso Brave 7LE. So this camera is actually been on the market for about a year and a half. So it's not completely brand new, but it cost me $170 Canadian, which is about $130 American, which means this is about three or four times cheaper than a GoPro. So I guess I am going to open this up, take a look and see what I got for the price. And I am going to see if it will do everything I need it to do. Also, I'm a little curious on whether I think this is actually um, three or four times not as good as a GoPro. Is a GoPro three or four times better than this? I don't know. I don't own a GoPro, but I'll kind of decide how much I like this thing. So. Let's open this up, take a look at what we got, and get testing it out. All right, here it is. Let's open it up. Well, that box was well sealed, but I've gotten into it, and here is everything that comes with it. So you have obviously the camera and it is in its waterproof case. So you can open that up. There we go. And there is the camera by itself. So it's got couple of let's see, we'll figure out how to get into this now this camera is water resistant up to a meter oh that's stiff There we go. So here are the uh, HDMI port and the USB port for charging everything. And as you can see, it's got foam in there. So it is for the water <coughs> waterproofing. And then on the bottom, it's got a um, tripod mount. And then here, oh, that one's not as stiff, good. Is the battery compartment and where you put your memory card. This does not include a memory card. So you have to get that separately. And obviously power button. This is the front of it. Uh, this is your front view screen and your back view screen, which is touch a touch screen. A couple buttons on the top, so I'm not sure exactly what everything does, but we will figure that out as we go. So this is a remote control for uh, the uh, camera and the video camera for starting and stopping. There is various mounts here for uh, the camera including one for handlebars so motorcycle or pedal bike or whatever you want to use it for these ones are uh, sticky ones so you can stick the camera up somewhere 
microfiber cloth and some extra sticky pads and some little ties, zip ties. Some straps. Uh, one of the straps here goes with the uh, remote control so you can wear it around your wrist. The cable for charging and whatnot. That's your USB cable. And here is an external battery charger. And not one, but two batteries come with it. So uh, that's a much better deal than uh, any of the other ones I looked at. So yes, one of the things you have to do is peel the plastic pieces off of here. There we go. And off the back. And nice and shiny. Okay, I have this charged up. I played around with it a little just to see what's going on. And power button on the side. Hold it to turn it on. And you can go into the, it's all a touch screen on the back here. So very um, easy to use. So you got uh, different things here, like you can do wind noise reduction, video quality, low, middle, or high, uh, image stabilization. You can uh, set your stuff for voice recording. Video resolution, you've got 4K at 30 frames, 2.7K at 30 or 60 frames per second, 1080 at 120, 60, or 30 frames per second, and 720 at 240, 120, or 60 frames per second. So lots of uh, choices there for your video resolution. And then um, if you go back into here and you hit the button up here that's got an M on it, switches you over to camera mode, you can go into there, for photo resolution, you've got 20 megapixel, 16, uh, 14 megapixel, 10, 8, or 5 megapixel. Image quality, same thing, low, medium, high. All kinds of different stuff you can do there. So here you've got the uh, seeing the image on the front of the camera. Now if you want to use the um, front facing screen, you press and hold the M button. It, oh, I get out of there. Okay, there. Now you press and hold the M button and it switches to the front screen. And this is your record button up here. Press and hold again. Now the only disadvantage is that you can only have one screen on it at a time. So the back screen or the front screen, you can't have both on at the same time. And the back screen is the only one that's a touch screen. So if you want to change any settings and you have it on the front scene screen, you have to change it back over to the back screen to change any settings. But before we uh, go outside to record, one thing I forgot to show you is there is another whole set of menus in here. You hit the middle button there. You've got uh, different effects, driving mode, screensaver, power frequency, white balance, all that. And one of the things you can do is you've got four different angles to choose from. Super wide, wide, medium, or narrow. So that is more options. However, I think um, from what I can see, the uh, changing the angle just crops the picture. So basically using the super wide angle is probably the best one. And then you can just crop it in post-production to whatever you want it to be. Okay, so here's an example of what it looks like in 4K high resolution. Um, I'm currently just walking in a mostly sunny part of the path and 
I am using an external microphone right now, but uh, here's what it sounds like um, from the microphone on the camera. So this is the microphone on the camera. This is what it sounds like. However, I am mostly going to be using an external cam microphone because it's a solution for my videos that I've already got. So now let's go test some other stuff. All right, well, here we're still in the 4K30 high resolution, and um, as you can see around me, there's not a lot of foliage on the trees, but this is a part where I'm really kind of going in and out of, uh, of shadows, so you can see how it's adjusting and compensating for that here. And also you can see how the image stabilization is working, because I'm walking over some pretty rough terrain here. And here we are walking along. I am still at, as you can see, 4K 30 frames per second, but I have set it to the low video quality. Still walking in and out of a little bit of shade and into the sun, so you can see how that looks as I'm doing this. All right, well, now we have changed the resolution. We are now at 2.7K at 60 frames per second. So we'll see how this looks. Um, one of the things I've noticed is it really uh, kind of squishes the square display at the front on this resolution. So I'm interested to see how it's gonna turn out on the actual video. And now we've switched over to 1080p at 60 frames per second. This is how that looks. All of the exact same uh, sun and shade and everything else of what I've been doing up to this point. So you decide which one looks the best to you. And this is still at the high video quality because I think on the lower settings, I would never go below the highest video quality setting. I'm interested to see how that's gonna look in the 4K though. Let's take a look at some photos. A 20 megapixel photo, a 14 megapixel photo, and basically the same photo in 8 megapixel. And here we are recording at 4K 30 frames per second in super wide. And here we are filming in wide. And this is 4K, 30 frames per second, at medium wide. And this is the same shot in narrow. I've done all these shots without moving the camera, or moving it as very little as I could when I was changing the settings. So you may be thinking to yourself, what about the battery life? Well, since I put in a fully charged battery, I've recorded about 25 minutes of video footage, most of it on 4K, some of it on some other settings. But I've also had the camera itself turned on for at least double that. So out of the 25 minutes, it's probably been on for close to an hour and I've snapped about 25 photos with it. And in all of that, I've used about half of one charge. So it's at about 50% right now since I started playing with it. So I'm guessing I should be able to get about an hour's worth of uh, filming on one charge of one battery. Well, there we go. That is my review of the Acaso Brave 7LE camera. Is it what I am going to be needing? Is it everything I hope it is? Well, I think it is. It's a pretty good little camera from the, my limited use of it. And you've seen the footage, you've seen what it can do. What do you think? I'd love to hear about that down in the comments. Or maybe you own one of these. Then uh, tell me how you like it. I'd love to hear about that. And if you've gotten this far in the video and you don't know who I am, my name is Ken. Uh, my channel's Canadian Retro Things. Normally I'm repairing and playing with old computers and old technology. But if you would like to see 
where this camera is going to be taking my retro channel, then why don't you come along for the ride and hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, thank you. And uh, a like or a comment would be greatly appreciated. But I've got nothing else to say on the subject, but I guess I, so I guess I will see you next time. And coming very soon, the reason that I bought this camera. Bye for now.